Hello and welcome along to the Project Cars 2 Virtual Racing League. Today you join us for round two of the Formula C Championship at Tsugo Sportslands, the second most famous Japanese circuit quite possibly after Sakito or made up Suzuka Land as we like to call it on Project Cars Racing. Uh, but yeah, sponsored by West Wales Karting as ever, the league now has uh, uh, quite a few regular drivers all fired up ready to go here today after a very wet Round one at Zolta was absolutely, well, it was more like swimming to be honest, or sailing or something. It definitely wasn't motor racing, aquaplaning absolutely everywhere. Uh, to remind you of the format, five minute qualifying followed by 30 minutes race, uh, one, man, one mandatory pit stop which must be taken not within the first three or last three laps. And uh, the weather is random for the whole of this championship, which is, uh, I think it's the first time we've done that actually in this in this league, having random weather for the entirety of the championship. So, so far it's been wet a lot, so we'll have to wait and see what Sugo Sportsland throws up for us today. The driver standings then, after round one, it was Alex CDL, uh, who narrowly took the win ahead of Scuderia Sam there, uh, got quite uh, close towards the end. Stuart Davis fought his way through to third, great fighting drive from Stuart, and then Stalker Brown, Sabrosa, Luke McGee, and Roger the Dodger in the top seven. Followed by Alex Brown, Big Bad Wolf, BTCC Dan, Bakevs, Chris Sorty, Twingo Tastic, and Free Gazelle, who had quite a few water problems, it has to be said, at Zolder, but thankfully he overcame them. Uh, and I don't think he's racing with us today, but hopefully he'll be back soon. The team standards, it's Luke EST leading the way by two points ahead of Alex Doherty. Scuderia, uh, Scuderia Seamus, Seamus as I've called it before, uh, in third place down 35 points, although Seamus slash Seamus wasn't there at round one. Uh, Sports Lansugo then, so let's have a look. It's in Japan and it's got nine turns, 2.42 miles in length. Uh, and it's got some very imaginatively named corners. For example, turn one is called the first corner, turn two is called corner two, and turn three is called corner three. So uh, yeah, let's hope the racing is a little bit less predictable than that. Looking at the safety car now, pounding around, and once again it is raining, surprise, surprise, at <laughs> this track. Uh, Ian, what do you make of this circuit? Let's just have a little look at the safety car going around now. Yep, it's a tricky, tricky little wee circuit that's uh, important to get the rhythm here right, which will be uh, tricky if the weather um, keeps up like it is. There's some, there's some uh, subtle nuances in the corners that you've got to get just right, as we see the uh, safety car making making the most of it. But uh, yeah, it's it's important to get the flow here right through some of the corners, and um, it makes it makes quite a difference in lap time. So it'll be interesting to see how the drivers approach this, especially if the weather conditions are as they <laughs> shaping up to be another uh, wet day. Yeah, I think the safety car driver here will be screaming, turn the water off, please, uh, uh, at this point. Look at the puddles on the inside of the circuit there. And let's not forget this car is squirming around here. Uh, it's got a lot more horsepower than the Formula C cars. I think the Formula C cars got about 200 horsepower, but this thing weighs about four times as much as a couple of tonnes compared to the... Uh, the Formula C cars are less than half a ton, so uh, yeah, they're just going to be aquaplaning everywhere in these sort of wet conditions. If that is indeed what we get here uh, today, Ian. definitely, and uh, they rely a lot on their aero for the grip through um, fast flowing circuit like this. So uh, it's going to be going to be quite a challenge without the without the ballast to weigh them down through some of these puddles. We already saw the carnage of that in Zolder. Yeah, exactly, and uh, so qualifying anyways, Alex CDL on pole position, our round one winner, starts off well here today, three tenths ahead of Roger the Dodger in second, Scuderia Sam back in third, but 1.3 seconds off the pace, now really beat Stuart Davis there on the grid, D-Man and Sabrosa follow quickly behind, uh, and then we've got Tango Tastic, Luke and Rugg Stalker Brown, uh, Buckets rounding out the top ten, so a really uh, fascinating little grid there, Pro proper some... Proper some battles going on anyway. Uh, and we're waiting now on this time. What's going on with the cameraman? But he's found his focus here. And looking at Stuart Davis, they're starting in fourth. He's had an excellent start as we're away here at Super Sportsland. Someone's off in the background. So there's a couple of cars already off in the barrier on the grass on the inside. Alex Ibiel leads the way though. And Stuart Rush, Dodger, and Stuart Davis. Oh, and they tangle but carry on facing the right way. As Kudria Sam takes advantage now, slots up into second place. And they're all trying to squeeze their way past here, all bunching up quickly already. This is allowed Alex Ibiel a fantastic lead. He's already one and a half seconds up by turn four. Uh, Stuart Davis is still trying to get past Scuderia Sam. It's like a complete traffic jam going on here. 
these drivers won't be able to see anything in this wall of spray uh, and they'll probably think oh god not more wet weather they're thinking but yes it is so we'll have to wait and see whether that stays with us or not or whether it dries up later on as we go now into oh, a tight, tight corner Muck Evans having a little look on the inside of Roger the Dodger Roger Dodger runs wide and Muck Evans is through by the looks of it but Roger's trying to brave it right around the outside here gets pushed slightly onto the onto the grass and McEvs is through a fantastic start from McEvs now Roger's going to find himself under threat down this really long straight from uh, Subrosa who's already passed by the looks of it as they head now into a hard breaking zone at the end of the back straight oh and bang that's uh, Subrosa getting uh, uh, taken up by Stork Brown quite possibly I think that was yeah it was and Chris Dodds he gets through and now more tangling going on between Luke McG, uh, the Scotsman there, who uh, wasn't taking any prisoners with Subrosa. It's a terrible, terrible uh, start there, first lap one for um, Subrosa, as Roger the Dodger now is back past Makev, so these two are continuing their fight, uh, and Alex Cdl will be heading over the line to complete lap one shortly, two seconds ahead of Scuderia Sam in second, a fantastic dream start from Alex Cdl as we look at the other Alex now, Alex Brown taking out all of the balls and <laughs> off in the, on the grass at turn at the last corner there. Uh, and now he's doing some donuts. So once you get those tyres wet and dirty on the grass, it's just Donut City from there, isn't it, Ian? It sure is. Um, we saw a bit of Donut City off the start line with uh, a few get getting uh, feeling to get to grips with it just off the line, and then a few tangles. But uh, starting to settle in a bit here. So some giant puddles. That's going to be the, the the thing that really is. Uh, going to make a break for the guys today if it, if it carries on as we are. We see some massive puddles and it's lashing oh, down just now. You see McKev's off there, yep, yeah, it's lashing it down just now and that's just going to make the puddles worse. So, oh, that McKev's and uh, McG getting together and uh, bunched up a bit there. It's not what you want in these conditions with the spray but uh, they've uh, kind of muddled through it just now but uh, yeah, treacherous your start to the race today. Yeah, not quite as bad as Zolder, it has to be said. There was a lot of carnage on that one at Zolder. Uh, but the field is already quite spread out. Oh, and D-Man there battling away with McG. I think it was McG nearly losing it, was it? Or was that, uh, who was that? Was that McG or Twingo? I think that was Twingo. Twingo just, Twingo, uh, Twingo had, a, had a wee sideways moment. Clipped up, but seemed to bounce off McG. And then uh, they're kind of carrying on. But, oh, it's very treacherous there, trying to get the line right through that corner with that big puddle on the inside. Not checking I have to say, then. A lovely overtake from Luke McGee on D-Man. D-Man ran a bit wide, but he avoided the puddle. But Luke McGee went straight through that puddle you were talking about there, Ian. And uh, almost as if it wasn't there. Cut right through it and ended up ahead of D-Man. D-Man probably wasn't expecting that one. And Sabrosa is not far behind watching this battle unfold. Yep, yeah, McGee will be used to the puddles being from Scotland. So he'll be uh, quite, quite happy to get the, the puddle line through there. To, to make most of the conditions for it to his advantage. But... Uh, I thought yeah, it was more snow, wasn't it, in Scotland? <laughs> 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 that depends, let's say. Make you get a wee nudge at the back there. D Man just reminding him he's there. Oh, oh and that's uh, Mick G's teammate. Uh, Stuart Davis is getting a bit sideways there. He's managed to collect it together and keep in third, but uh, he's got that's a uh, close Roger right up to him. So, and, and Roger's been. Roger will be quick on these uh, in these cars, so uh, yeah, he needs to watch himself. But he's managed to get himself going again, and uh, but it's tightened right up there. Yeah, well, Roger, like you say, has shown a lot of pace here as we ride on board with him now. You can see that spray coming off as the drivers struggle to pick their breaking point here, and uh, he gets really close to the back of Stewart there. But uh, Stewart's got himself to blame for getting stuck into this after a small little error uh, earlier on this lap. Roger, though, has had his fair share of uh, adventures already in this race, hasn't he, in the first couple of laps? So these two have already been in the wars, and now they find themselves battling away third and fourth. But Roger certainly has the pace here if he can find a way through. He was qualified second on the grid, of course, to Alex Diel, but he now finds himself eight seconds behind the race leader. So Roger really wasn't on a mission, and he's looking for the inside line now. He gets a great run out of the last corner. Stuart Davis will know he's there. So over the hill they go now and over the line to complete another lap to start lap number five now is it on oh, no, a lap number four and Roger's got this move done surely if he doesn't outbreak himself which he doesn't and uh, Stuart Davis had no option but to surrender that position there once Roger had the high ground coming out the last corner uh, and now Stu will be hoping to follow Roger around and see if they can catch up to Scuderia Sam who's only three seconds up the road yeah I'm sure to see uh, Roger going through the puddle there it's uh uh, Roger will be keen to try and try and uh, make up for a bit of lost ground in the opening laps, as you say, qualified second, but just dropped back a bit, and now he's looking to get get on his way again. But um, as we look back, Sabrosa also recovering now, 
uh, quite a quick driver just had a really unlucky first lap and just trying to make his way back through the field as we look at him uh, closing in on D-Man there. He's confidently riding those curves in that chicane though, isn't he Ian? He's really attacking them. He's, we know, well, we know Sabrosa is an attacking driver. He's won a championship already in this league. Uh, and eighth position is not something that he would want, I guess, considering his pace. Uh, but yeah, these haven't been his favourite cars, have they so far? It's fair to say. Yeah, not so far. We saw him um, struggling at the end in the in the first race in these conditions. So um, he's certainly a quick driver, um, but um, yeah, maybe the conditions just not quite to his liking, and he had was a bit unlucky in the opening laps. So uh, we'll see how he, see how he goes from there. And um, back in eighth just now, as we look at uh, Alex Dell who's just uh, disappeared away at the front here a bit. Uh, fortunate, fortunate first few corners for him to get a bit of a gap, but. Uh, he certainly um, was quickest in qualifying and uh, shown it here as we look at um, Sam trying to keep keep pace with him. Um, but yeah, he certainly got a good, good lead at the start here. Well, this is the thing. Uh, Alex Udl's lead there, three seconds. But uh, two seconds of that was just from lap one. So the pace is there and the driver's following closely behind. But uh, a lot of the damage has been done already. And how do you close that gap when you've got someone as fast as Alex Udl apart from to try and put some pressure on him? to create an error but he certainly emerged as the early championship favourite has to be said even though we're just on uh, race two out of six here uh, but of course there's a long way to go we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out and race one finished very closely so perhaps today we'll finish very closely too as we look at Chris Dodds now in fifth position so he's uh, he's made some ground he's up in fifth he's ahead of Stalker Brown by a second or so see Stalker Brown going wide on the exit there coming onto the back straight that won't help his uh, straight line speed down the straight at all and he'll be looking in his mirrors now at uh, the traffic coming at him in the shape of D-Man and uh, Subrosa, but Stalker Brown now in that very distinctive livery car. Let's see how he tackles this puddle. Does he go straight through it? Yes, he does. He uses a Scottish technique. <laughs> yes, he sure does. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it. But uh, you got to be careful that you don't uh, bog down there. But uh, it seems to be working for him just now. So uh, why not? It's the way to do it. In fact. Um, it's the weather does look like it's uh, eased off a wee bit, it's not quite as uh, treacherous as it was, so maybe it's um, a, sign of, a sign of things to come, but uh, it's looking a bit, um, it's looking a wee bit better in places, although there it's again gushing down again, so it depends, depends where you look. Yeah, maybe it's raining harder at one part of the circuit than the other, who knows, maybe it's possible, possible. Um, but yeah, Stalker Brown now, if he can see anything in his mirrors, he'll see D-Man coming at him quite quickly and you see Stalker Brown using that wet racing line round turn two there well he was either using the wet racing line or he just ran wide by accident but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt he was using the wet racing line to find some extra grip and that benefited him slightly by the looks of it because he's opened up another half a car length or so of, uh, over D-Man and all of this all of these little gains are crucial in a race like this and who's that up ahead oh that's Chris Doughty so these two are catching Chris judging by the lap times here yep um, yep, looks like it as we see back to back to G now with uh, Twingo just behind him. But um just uh try to keep his rhythm as we look at uh in uh with uh, Twingo just behind him but uh, yeah oh we bit we bit wide there that's not gonna help us uh that's gonna close that but that's been a good battle between these two in uh, the last few races so we'll see uh, looking to carry on as the yeah, I'm not sure, but we might have our first DNF of the race in the shape of Alex Brown, who's in 12th at the moment, and he's fallen back ever, as we're talking. He's just fallen back all the time, isn't he? So that's a sign of somebody who isn't in this race anymore, quite possibly, unless he's made a pit stop. As Talking of pit stops, that's Chris Dodds. He's making a very early pit stop. So uh, he clearly thinks it's not going to dry up at all this race because he's pitting so early here uh, we're only on lap seven and he's already in the pits so of course if he's to uh, if it's dry if it dries up later in the race he'll have to make another pit stop for dries quite possibly yeah quite possibly but bit, 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 bit of a risky game here but um he's obviously looking at looking at the the amount of water coming down and the time left in the race it's uh, still still 22 minutes left in the race so um it's quite a long way to go but he's obviously confident in the conditions that it's not going to get any drier, so he's happy to, to get his, get his other pit stop and get underway again. So, uh, interesting to see how that plays out. Was look at, uh, yeah. It's Alex, interesting Alex though as well, well like, to see like how how is that going to benefit him at all in this race by pitting so early, apart from the fact he gets out of that fight with uh, 
Stalker Baron Sabrosa. Maybe he was thinking he was going to lose time there, so pitted early. Yeah, I mean, just uh, get yourself a bit of clear track, get yourself a job, and just if you if you know know your pace, you can get your head down and just get bang the laps, and then it makes sense to just give yourself that space. But uh, yeah, also a bit also a bit of a risky game, given that uh, we don't know quite know how the how the weather's going to pan out uh, the rest of the day. So um, yeah, just we've got to wait and see. But uh, yeah, makes makes it makes sense from where he is. So we just uh, got to go wait and see. So look at. Uh, man at the back they're just uh, closing in on Tungo again I think there might be an issue with Subrosa here you know because uh, I spotted just out the corner of my eye there Subrosa might have been lagging a little bit did you see that Ian again I think yep, there's a just bit saw, of a glitch just, going on yep just uh, it, it wasn't Twingo it was uh, it was Subrosa I was seeing that uh, D-man but um, yeah it was just a wee, wee, wee glitch there and uh, yeah could be could be a uh, sign of things to come unfortunately but uh, we'll just see, wait and see but yeah Certainly looked uh, there's a few few issues there. Yeah, hopefully it's uh, maybe just some water in his transponder or something, rather than the uh, uh, a glitch of a Project Cars 2 nature, which usually we have seen as terminal. Despite having no damage, well, we have got damage on, cosmetic only, but not performance impacting damage. We still do see retirements, don't we, uh, in terms of uh, glitches going on and whatnot. Certainly glitches and uh, water getting in the system, so you just got to you just got to <laughs> never know when that's going to happen. So uh, yeah, yeah. Be, we'd be unfortunate, but uh, he's still still in it for just now. So see see if he can see if he can ride ride the storm. If Free Gazelle was uh, racing with us today, we could pass to him for some advice on that one. But uh, unfortunately, he isn't here. So anyway, looking back at the fight for the lead, six and a half seconds now. The gap between. Scuderia Sam and Alex Udiel and Roger's a lot closer to Scuderia Sam now uh, but he's still about the same gap to Alex so I don't know if Scuderia Sam's made a mistake somewhere it's possible uh, but it's looking like the fight for second place is really hotting up here as Roger the Dodger now bears down on Scuderia Sam and you have to say if it wasn't for Roger's quite poor start and slight tangle with Stuart Davis he would be already ahead of Scuderia Sam judging by his pace uh, here so yeah we'll have to wait and see what happens in, in this fight for second whether Scuderia Sam waves and pass to try and chase after Alex or, or not because at, at the moment in terms of pace Alex Adiel's got this race won unless anything else happens of course yeah as you say I mean he's got nearly doubled his advantage from last time um, he got like the first he got two seconds in the first corner and then um, and then he's that's him up to seven now so yeah dis despite his early fortune he's still pulling away so he's, he's got the pace and as you say it's uh, it looks like going to be tough for anyone there uh, closing in them in today yeah but meanwhile Stuart Davis is uh, 13 seconds back he's been in no, no man's land is Stuart Davis now a sort of slightly adrift from the top three but uh, a big gap back to Stalker Brown uh, and Subrosa and as we mentioned Subrosa you can see him there uh, with D-Man behind and oh, although yeah he's, he's still lagging isn't he there's something going on there we'll have to keep our eye on that uh, but yeah, there's a great fight going on for 5th, 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th between those three drivers. And then we've got a gap back to Twingo and McGee who are also having a great fight. And Chris Dodd, he having made his early pit stop, is also in there with McEvs. And it's a shame for McEvs because he had such a fantastic opening lap. He was way up there in the top five. And now he finds himself back to 11th just through one or two small errors. So you can see how close and closely matched the field is. As we look at Roger the Dodger now and slightly giving Scuderia Sam a nudge so the fight for second is on right now as the wall of spray flies up and hits Roger the Dodger's car. And Roger's looking down the inside, is he? No, not this time. He's going to bide his time and wait for a proper overtaking manoeuvre as it goes through the chicane. That's definitely not a proper overtaking manoeuvre through the chicane, is it? I don't think we see every, anyone overtaking through there. It's very much single file. But if he can keep close to Scuderia Sam through these next two corners and have a great run on the straight, he gives himself a good chance. Let's see what happens here, Ian. Santa does. He's, he's been shaping up for it. Maybe just getting a bit close, bit um, struggling for vision in the spray. But uh, that's giving him a bit of a run now. So can he make the most of it? He's uh, shaping up for it. But uh, just uh, Sam's just positioning himself just just in the right place, just to just avoid any any overlap but uh, yep it's uh, certainly tight so he's looking ooh could it might be an option there's scan Sam jumps up on the curves that's not going to help him there but he's uh, just got the line for it but uh, yeah it's certainly close between these two yeah it's a great scrap going on between these two isn't it and uh, they found each other on the same bit of circuit quite a lot of times in the Genetta Championship of course that we had last time out 
uh, and Roger was very strong in that, winning a lot of races towards the end of that championship, although he was already a bit adrift of the, the championship lead, unfortunately for him, uh, by that point, but he was winning a lot of races, and Scuderia Sam and him found uh, each other on track quite a lot, so they're very familiar, and Scuderia Sam blocks the inside line once again and keeps Roger at bay, and as they're fighting, they drop in seconds now to Alex C. Diablo up ahead, so Alex would be quite happy with this, and Stuart Davis will also be quite happy with this, as Roger goes right around the outside there of Scuderia Sam in turn three, is he going to make this one stick, Scuderia Sam goes straight through that puddle there and keeps him at bay, and Roger Dodge is still fighting it though, and he's trying to wrong foot him as best as he can, a uh, great little bit of uh, racing going on between these two. Uh, and now Roger the Dodger waiting once again, possibly, for that run on the straight that uh, he's hoping he'll get. Oh, Scuderia Sam goes wide. This is Roger's opportunity. He goes down the inside now before the long back straight. And uh, he makes his way through. Fantastic manoeuvre there from Roger the Dodger. But now he has to try and uh, defend down the straight. As Scuderia Sam has the slipstream, which is quite powerful in these cars down this straight. And he's looking down the inside. Is he going to go for a dive? Oh, it's very close, but not quite. And Roger now has that position. So... He'll surely pull away if he shows any more of the sort of pace he's been showing recently. And you can see, Ian, that the track is starting to dry up a little bit, I think. Yeah, definitely. The track's the track has been drying up the last few laps. So um, that's, uh, that's um, maybe helping Roger as well. Um, but uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely definitely had the pace here and just uh, um, was... Uh, it was just it was just trying to get the line past Sam was defending very well, but it was just once he got the once he got the line right and got past he should be able to pull away a bit now. But um it's also got a factor in the drying track. and um, we've seen uh, some of these big puddles now how will that affect and then um likes of Chris who's already come in. Um so there's uh, quite a quite a lot to factor in here as you see. Um but that, that fight with uh, Roger and Sam has really helped Alex here is now it's nearly a nine second lead he's got now, so um yeah, need a need a need a dramatic change to uh, to affect his day, I think. Well, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. These are the sort of conditions, though, that really challenge the drivers when you've got uh, mixed conditions, puddles still on the circuit, but now a dry line forming as well. It starts to get very tricky, and it's also very tricky to know what to do in terms of pit strategy because a lot of the drivers have been waiting out the pit stops and haven't been making their stops very early at all in this race, apart from Chris Doughty. Uh, and they're all waiting to see what happens with this dry racing line, aren't they, Ian? And, uh, well, by the looks of it, we might have a few drivers possibly gambling on slicks, but they're going to have to stay away from the puddles and those slippery curbs. Yeah, definitely. It's always risky. And then it's like, um, without, sort of just, just over the halfway point in the race, when do you come in? Uh, and then there's also uh, potentially another weather slot, so how would how would how will that affect things? So uh, there's, uh, yeah, it's just about biding your time just now, just seeing how the how much the track dries out, and then if if there's any other weather to come. So drivers just be waiting to see here. So look, it's, uh, Sam looked like he was thinking about it, but not coming into the pitch yet. As he's uh, getting getting his uh, wet tires some. Uh, uh, some water just to keep just to keep them optimal because uh, that'll be the next thing. It's like will this tire start to will this tire start to wear out with the uh, if it if it does keep getting drier. Yeah, you, well, definitely the the tires are going to be starting to wear out now and overheat. Uh, if those if they're not getting enough water, and you see Stuart there looking for the water as well. Although tends to avoid the really big puddles uh, in case he ends up aquaplaning off the circuit, which is a definitely a wise decision from Stuart there. You see his years of uh, racing experience coming into play, and he does play this game a lot as well in single player mode. Uh, and do frequent long races on single player mode as well as Stuart Davis so he'll be used to these sort of uh, strategic uh, decisions as well I would have thought and uh, maybe more so than some of the other drivers uh, but D-Man here going very well as well in sixth position and it's an opportunity for people like D-Man, like Stalker Brown, like Stuart Davis who have found themselves a little bit adrift from the top three uh, to maybe you know stick on some slicks and see what happens yeah, definitely. Especially with, as, as it comes to as it comes closer to the end of the race, it's the kind of go for broke or depending on the position you are, have have a go and see what happens. Um, so, yeah, definitely, and it is it's still still drying out a bit. So there's definitely a bit more give it a bit more time, and uh, yeah, it could be within as we in, in the closing laps to to have a go and see see what happens. So uh, yeah, it could could be a very very interesting finish to this if uh, things go on as they are. Certainly could be you can see Scuderia Sam there hunting for the water once again to keep those tyres cool. So clearly he has some issues with overheating there. 
as Twingo Tastic makes his way through one of the remaining puddles on the circuit. And then you can see how dry the track is in that section. There was no spray at all. That, that looks like a bone dry circuit, Ian, in that section there. So yeah, it looks like it's pretty much ready for slips in some parts of the circuit now. So we're just all waiting, holding our breath to see who's going to make that first jump. And uh, is anyone going to be brave enough? Because you have to be really brave in these conditions to stick on slicks. And if you're the race leader, that's the last thing you want to do is put on slicks and end up losing yourself the win. Definitely. And uh, the first few laps while you're building up the heat in the tyres is also going to be treacherous. It might be the time for slicks, but yeah, you got to bed them in and uh, make sure they're up to up to working temperature before uh, you start putting the laps in. And if you go too early, you'll be just sliding off into the into the gravel. So it's uh, it's about picking the right time as well as look at uh, McG struggling a bit here at, at the back. It's uh, not uh, he he he'll be he'll be definitely thinking about it, but. Uh, so, so will a few of them, and it's just like, uh, at what stage are, are you are you are ready to take that risk, basically? Because it's still still a risk at the moment with the amount of puddles on the track. Yeah, well, uh, Ian, well, oh, Luke and McGee, I should say, is uh, <laughs> is looking at the back of uh, Chris's car there and thinking that guy's made a pit stop already, but I still need to make one. Do I come in and put some slicks on and try and hunt him down towards the end of the uh, end of the race? And these are the sort of things that will be going through the drivers' heads right now. But they haven't got long to make it. We've got 10 minutes left of this 30-minute race. We're two thirds of the way through, and the drivers are now finding themselves on a very dry in track. As Scuderia Sam's in the pits now, but it's, uh, let's see if he's going to take tyres. It looks like quite a short pit stop that. So I don't think he's put on any tyres. He stayed on the wets, I think. Uh, yes, he has, Ian. He stayed on the wet tyres. So these are worn wets now on Scuderia Sam's car. He's decided not to take slicks. So is that the right decision or not? We will have to wait and see what happens. Well, there's been, there's been a call that it could be more thunderstorms, so that'll be um, playing into the driver's minds if, uh, if that's the case. Uh, so the sound looks, and uh, you can see it on the, you can see it on the horizon. There's, there's potentially more rain coming. So yeah, um, it's getting greyer. It's getting greyer, and uh, so do, do you, with with the dry track, do you do you, do you stay stay with what you've got, or do you go go slicks and hope that it um, doesn't get as wet, or do you just stay as as we see <laughs> Chris on the on his uh, wet tires struggling a bit? So um, yeah, that'll start to play in their minds as well. The change in weather, how will that affect things? Yeah, we're looking at Chris Doherty now, defending hard from Subrosa, who gets the inside line. A great drive there from Subrosa. And what is he doing behind Chris? Has he pitted? He looks like he's getting fantastic traction. Uh, is he on slicks or not? I got a feeling he might be on slicks. Looks, yeah, uh, looks, looks from his. Uh, we'll see from. from see, it's hard to we'll see, see, isn't it? We'll, we'll, we'll know from his from his next lap what he's doing because. Um, you got like uh, Alex is in Alex and Roger in the 129s, um, so we'll see. Interesting to see, but yeah, Sabrosa might be one of the ones that has, has gone for the gamble. Just see what happens. He was in, he was in a sort of mid table, so it was it's worth it, worth it in his position. So we'll know we'll know from the sort of next lap how what he's what he's decided. Yeah, well, he was fighting hard with D-Man and with uh, Stalker Brown, who we can see in the pits now, just exiting the pits. So uh, yeah. Wherever he is compared to these, uh, these guys, we will know there's Subrosa coming down the straight now over the brow of the hill, going over the start finish line as Stalker Brown exits the uh, pit exit. So I'm going to guess here, Ian, that Subrosa's taken tyres, which is why it's cost him a little bit more time in the pits and he's fallen back there, and Stalker Brown possibly staying on wets. Yeah, it looks from Subrosa's time, definitely looks like he's pitted there, so um, it'll just be whether see what his lap times are like now that he's as we see him ooh carving through there he certainly looks good pace and it is a drying track so it could could be that he's, he's gone on to slicks here as we look at uh, more drivers coming in yeah the top two Alex Adil in the bright green livery car there uh, going down the pit lane and uh, Roger the Dodger trundling along behind him down the pits as well so it's a pit stop race. Are any of them going to take tyres? This is really a crucial point of the race here, with only seven minutes left to go. Uh, let's have a look who's going to exit the pits first. It's Alex DL, closely followed by Roger, so I'm going to say those two didn't take any, on any tyres there. Uh, Stuart Davis now is, he is taking on tyres. Stuart Davis has taken on uh, slick tyres. You can see his car there, hoisted up in the air by the uh, mechanics who wear these incredible virtual uh, invisible cloaks, so we can't see them. 
Uh, but yeah, you can see his tyres there changed to slicks. So Stuart was on slicks. He's the, he's the top of the runners who's changed to slick tyres. So we'll have to wait and see what his lap times are going to be and if he can hunt down the leaders for the win. There's Stuart Eggerson in the pits now. Can he, can he avoid the puddles? Can he hunt down the top three ahead of him? We'll have to wait and see. This is fascinating stuff here. Well, that's the Brosa just at 123, so that's massively faster than anything we've seen today. So he must, he's definitely in slicks. Uh, in comparison, sort of Alex's, the race leader's times are 129, so that's six wow. seconds a lap potentially uh, if you've gone into slicks. And as we saw, Stuart's already gone into slicks as well. So this is going to be a very interesting end to the race here with uh, just under seven minutes left. Yeah, so what's that going to give us? A few laps, possibly. It's going to be close. And running wide in the background, that's Stalker Brown. And I think Stalker Brown has stayed in the... Has he stayed with the, uh, the wets? I think he might have. We'll have to wait and see. Judging by his lap times, I think he might have. Yeah, look, look, looking at him coming down the pits, it looked like he just... Uh, it was stopping away again. There was no, there was no, um, oh, no mechanics or anything. Oh, it's phenomenal. He's, he, uh, suppose is on it now, so wait and see what uh, Stuart's times look like but uh, yeah definitely the, the gamble is to go oh, oh see uh, wide there but uh, it's, uh, he's kept on it so yeah this is going to be fascinating yeah it was clearly the right decision to go on slips the circuit is ready for slips or or is it is it, are we going to have another thunderstorm and have another twist in this race <laughs> it's, it's not been the most action packed race in terms of wheel to wheel action but in terms of strategy it is really interesting and D-Man now is in the pit lane uh, I'm not sure what he's doing at the moment in terms of tyres, we'll have to wait and see. He's in, he's in the pits for quite a long time. Certainly long enough, it looks like it's a tyre change from the, from the length of time he's Possibly. in there. So um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be another one. So that's uh, just, just Look behind. Look how easy an overtake there. Oh, I know, he's just carving, carving through the field now, up to fifth. Oh, he runs a bit wide there. You can see as soon as you get those slicks though on a bit of damp, uh, you know, it can go very quickly wrong, can't it? So uh, Stuart Davis now nearly thrown off the road. Oh no, that was Luke McGee in the background, his teammate. There's Stuart Davis. And look how close now Stuart Davis is to Scuderia Sam, who has uh, just left the wet tyres on. Uh, it's just clearly the wrong call in these conditions right now. And Stuart Davis taking so much more speed through the corners and he can see his prey up ahead. And with the rate he's closing in, it'll be absolutely easy pickings for Stuart when he gets there, I would have thought. Yeah, it'd be a sitting duck at this rate with uh, with the speed, just the speed differential of potentially up to six seconds a lap. That's just going to be, it's just going to be no hope there. So um, it's uh, now, now, now the question is, is have some have have they left themselves long enough to to trouble the leaders who are both who both stayed on the on the wet tires? Oh, I look, a much later Stuart Davis can break than Scuderia Sam straight down the inside and uh, through. And yeah, no hope there at all for Scuderia Sam. Stuart Davis straight through. And uh, Scuderia Sam won't enjoy seeing his uh, arch rival from the Ginetta Championship, who we beat to the Ginetta title, just carve through there so effortlessly. But now Stuart Davis is on a mission. He's got nine seconds to make up on the leader and only a couple of laps to do it. And, uh, well, judging by the pace advantage of these tyres, it's entirely possible. He's only he's 10 seconds back. So, yeah, two laps, he'll be right there, Ian. Yeah, definitely. It's just, just going to be touch and go as to whether he's has enough time left. But he's uh, he's definitely got the pace advantage. That's, uh, what's that, five five seconds he's making up on the, on the, um, on the leaders just now. So... Uh, yeah, he's definitely got the pace advantage. It's just uh, will he run? Will he run out of time there? It's going to be very tight uh, to the towards finish the race. So see him just steaming through the corner again. Yeah, he's even riding the curbs now, so he has to be careful. He doesn't get too overconfident and throw it off the road once again. And uh, it's a little bit of rain I can see in the air once again there, Ian. As we look at Sabrosa coming down the inside now of, uh, of Stalker Brown, who I thought he was already ahead, but maybe not. Uh, it's showing the final lap already here, actually. So. So yeah, it's interesting stuff. Stuart maybe a little bit too far back, uh, but yeah, this is this is a fascinating instance of this race. Scuderia Sam is uh, still uh, ten seconds or so in front of fifth, so it looks like fourth might be okay for him. Uh, top three is undecided though, and some positions in the midfield are still undecided on the final lap. Yeah, pit pit crews have said they're expecting more rain, but uh, it's not going to be it's not going to come quick enough for those that stayed out in wets, and it's just whether. Um, uh, the the slick guys can um, have can get enough pace. Yeah, to, four seconds to... now. Yep, that's uh... there he is. There he is. There's uh, that's Rogers just ahead. So oh, this is going to be so tight. 
Yeah, you can see the top three now, all on the same, uh, all, all on the same straight and the same shot, pretty much. Stuart Davis can see first place. He can see second place. He can see that his rivals are on the wrong tyres and he is on the right tyres. And he's hunting them down now. And he knows when he gets there, there'll be easy pickings. But can he hunt them down fast enough? Alex Idiel and Roger the Dodger will be looking in their wing mirrors nervously here at the menacing machine of Stuart Davis coming at them very quickly. And then Alex Idiel can't wait to put the power down here, coming out of the last corner. And he will see the checkered flag. And Alex Idiel looks like he's going to get to the line in, in time. But what about Roger the Dodger? Stuart Davis has a fantastic exit off the last corner. And he's in the slipstream. He's in the wall of spray. He pulls out alongside. And it's a photo finish. But it's just Roger the Dodger ever so slightly edging it to second place with Alex Idiel taking the win. And Stuart Davis ending up in third place. What a race that was. And Scuderia Sam will be quite glad in the end, probably, just to take home fourth position as Subrosa was coming at him very quickly towards the end with D-Man and Stalker Brown uh, in hot pursuit as well. Very, very close finish in the midfield and of course with the leaders there. The, the top three covered by two and a bit seconds on the line. Yeah, what, what a finish there. It was close was clearly the right way to go there but it was just uh, just about getting the timing right. We saw Stuart Davis and, and Subrosa really coming on strong there and uh, giving it all they got in the last minute just to, but uh, yeah for, for Stuart Davis just one one more lap needed probably so just uh, just time ran out on him there but uh, what a what an effort and what a what a gamble there to, to get to get himself back up in the pudding <laughs> 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 yeah, but we're coming together at the end there <laughs> yeah the customary uh, post race celebrations happening in the gravel trap at turn one there uh, after the race is finished but confirmation of the result Alex Idiel, the winner, ahead of Roger Dodger and Stuart Davis to round out the podium there. Alex Idiel, two wins from two now, so uh, it's looking good for him in the championship. Scuderia Sam in fourth, just ahead of Sabrosa, D-Man and Stalker Brown. Uh, then we had, who did we have then? Chris Doherty, who fought his way back to eighth, despite pitting very early. Chris Doherty was in eighth in the end, so not too bad for him. Uh, Twingo Tastic ahead of Luke Mokjia, great uh, race for Twingo Tastic there. Uh, Makevs looked promising in the early stages, but in the end it was 11th for him. And unfortunately, Alex Brown was our only DNF of the race. So let's have a look at the driver standings here. Yep, we've got uh, Alex, Alex Edel with the lead there, 20, 20 point lead already, uh, and level with uh, <laughs> Squidrio Sam and Stuart Davis level after two rounds. So uh, the rivalry continues there, and then Roger Dodger not far away, Soccer Brown, Sabrosa. Blue G and um, Alex Alex Brown there, um, Christoph Tilly, the man, Twingo Tastic, McEvs, Big Bad Wolf, BT Suzanne, and Free Gazelle. So, um, yep, it's uh, good shaping up well for Alex and Gail, but uh, there's uh, lots, to, lots to play for behind them still. And uh, in the team standing, we've got uh, uh, courtesy of Alex, the, the Alex Dorsey uh, taking the lead in championship there from Luke SD, McDodger. Scuderia Samus, uh, Brian Tastic, Rebosa, Alex, Man221 and Crash and Bash at the bottom there. Yeah, well, Crash and Bash weren't involved today, were they, unfortunately? But uh, hopefully next time we can see them back on track, end of the fan favourites. But yeah, the first two races decided by one second and two seconds, respectively. So uh, even though we've had the same winner each time out, it's still very much all to play for in this championship as we head next now to Silverstone. So uh, we've had rain first two races. Will we have rain in Silverstone? Well, you can decide that one. See you next time. <laughs>